All right now, so let's make an overview of what we learned so far. This here was the ulna, and that was the medial bone of the forearm, and this was the radius, that was the lateral bone of the forearm. Now I suggest we start with explaining the ulna. Now we can see that ulna is articulating with the humerus and it does so by articulating with this semilunar notch or the semilunar notch. It is constricted here and it is created by the selecronon process and the coronoid process. Now the coronoid process enters here this fossa and that is the coronoid fossa while the olecranon process enters the olecranon fossa of the humerus. Now let's explain some other properties on the ulna, and this here is the ulnar tuberosity. We can also see here the nutrient foramen of the ulna, and the nutrient foramen is on the anterior surface. Now how do we know that this is the anterior surface? Well, we first have to explain the borders of the ulna. So this here would be anterior border. This would be the posterior border. And this would be the interosseous border. Now, the interosseous border is where the interosseous membrane attaches. And the interosseous membrane also attaches on the interosseous border on the radius. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Now, let's stick to the ulna. So we have the clearly defined borders, and it's only natural that between these borders we also have the surfaces. So this would be the interior surface. This would be the, the, the medial, right? Because it is the medial surface, the medial bone of the forearm. Remember, the radius is the lateral one, so the radius will have the lateral surface, right? So we have here the medial surface. And this here would be the posterior surface. So we have the posterior, medial, and the anterior surface of the ulna. Now we continue further and we're coming down to one part where it's not more easy, it's not easy to define actually the borders and the surfaces and all we see is somewhat a cylindrical shape here. We're coming close to the head of the ulna and we can see here this process that is the styloid process of the ulna. We can see the articular surface but there's a lot of space between the carpal bones and the ulna. That's because there is an articular disc here normally which articulates with the ulna and the carpal bones. And we will talk about that just in a minute. We can also see here that this circumference actually articulates with the ulnar notch of the radius. Remember, up there, ulna had the radius notch. And down there, the radius has the ulnar notch. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, and let's start with the radius. Now, the radius has its head up there. As we already said, its circumference is articulating with the radial notch of the ulna. Now, if we, we, can look, we can see here that it articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. This is the capitulum of the humerus. And it does so by this surface here, this depression that is called the fovea. The constriction here would be the neck of the radius, and this is the radial tuberosity. Remember we had the ulnar tuberosity, while here we have the radial tuberosity. And if we go down there a little bit, wow, what a surprise. Again, we have the nutrient foramen, just as we had on the ulna. Now, the nutrient foramen on the radius is also on the interior surface. So they have a lot of lot in common here. Let's explain the borders again. This would be the interosseous border. This here would be the anterior border. And this would be the posterior border. Now 
we have this surface here, and this surface is the lateral surface, because that's the lateral bone of the forearm. This is the interior surface, and this one here would be the posterior surface of the radius. Now, as we go down a little bit more, it becomes more broad. We have here the ulnar notch, as already mentioned. And we also have distally articulating surfaces for the scaphoid bone here, right? This is the scaphoid. And for the lunate bone, right? This is the lunate bone. Okay. Now, if we look at the dorsal side, we can see here the dorsal tubercle, and that's pretty much it. The radius and the ulna are explained. Now, let's not forget they articulate they articulate with the humerus and the lunate, scaphoid, and the articular disc here. Okay. These lessons come as part of my software called Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com or you can click here and subscribe for free lessons in the future.